Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope everyone is doing really good and great. I am Mahesh, your physics teacher, and you're watching me on your favorite physics channel, SMR Online Physics. Today in this class, I'm going to discuss in details about the principal rays and the ray diagrams, how to really draw them effectively, correctly, without any confusion, perfectly, for convex lenses as well as concave lenses. Are you ready for it? Say yes. Yeah. So let's get started. First of all, I'll start with the how to really understand the image formation by the biconvex lens, also called double convex lens, or simply called as convex lens, or more popularly called as the magnifying glass. All right, that is how to really understand the image formation by the well known convex lenses. Right. Okay, so first of all, let's get started with the principal rays. Very, very useful for the students studying in school section that is 9th as well as 10th or it can really helpful for any student who is supremely interested in physics okay want to really do well in the higher up even useful for the 12th class students also the principal rays easy to understand at the higher level so first of all learn how to get your convex lenses correct this is my reference midline then convex lenses have both the surfaces, both the refracting surfaces bulged outwards. That's one of the important points to be understood. That's why it's called as doubly convex lens. All right. In my last class, I was talking about, I discussed about the refraction by these lenses and the very important lens makers equation and the accompanying lens formula applicable for thin lenses. If you haven't watched it, Please do watch it. All right. Okay. So this is your convex lens. Very simply and easily defined as made up of a transparent material, thicker in the middle and thinner at the edges. So now a ray of light which passes right through the mid part of this lens almost goes undeviated. Very simple to see here. This is the midpoint of the lens. Uh, line between the refracting surfaces this is better known by O that is optical center all right so this is a ray of light or an imagined line which strikes at the surface at 90 degrees and just hence goes undeviated to the lens so this comes in and goes out this is also better known as the principal axis okay the principal axis so the first principal ray which is valid geometrically to understand the image formation by convex lenses is a ray of light incident upon the convex lens parallel to the principal axis after refraction always seems to converge at a point. It seems to converge or pass through a point which lies on the principal axis that is called as your focus. So let us call this the second focus because the lenses, as we already know, will have double focus because of the double curvature. So at the same time, we have the center of curvature. We call it as 2F2. So similarly, there is a focus on the left side. This is your principal focus 1. This is F1. And similarly, for this curvature, we have this center of curvature, also termed as 2F1. So this is your principal ray number 1. That's good. The second ray of light states that any ray of light which is incident passing right through the focus. Yeah. A ray of light incident right through the focus of this lens after refraction will be always refracted parallel to the principal axis. This is your ray number Two. And as I have already shown for principal axis, that is the third simple ray to easily understand. Any ray of light which happens to be incident right through the optical center of the lens. 
will always go undeviated. That's it. So a convex lens can be best understood as a combination of a small, uh, small double prisms as well as in the center we can imagine a rectangular glass slab of extremely narrowed thickness. What I mean to exactly say is this, this convex lens can be easily visualized as two prisms kept upside down and in the middle portion we can imagine as if you have a glass slab and again then we have this inverted prism coming up. I hope it's clear to you. Yeah, slightly cut off. Okay. So here you see that we already discussed in details everything about prisms and this is what exactly prisms do. A prism which is inverted upside down goes up and goes up. That's perfect. And here there would be a lateral displacement but if the thickness of the slab would be lesser then the lateral displacement is also negligible. That is what we mean saying. So slight bending and almost comes out straight like. So a ray of light happening to pass through the optical center almost goes undeviated. This is how we can easily explain the converging nature of convex lens. So now I'd like to discuss about the principal rays of concave lenses. All right. So concave lens basically by behavior is well known as a diverging lens. All right. And in terms of shape, it's exactly opposite to the shape of a biconvex lens. All right. So the shape of a concave lens is something like this. Every one of us, of us should be familiar with this shape, right? This is how to draw a concave lens, thicker at the edges, thinner in the middle, right? So you can have this uh, reference line passing right to the mid half of this lens vertically. And this midpoint enclosed between the two refracting surfaces is your optical center. So any ray of light incident along the optical center goes undeviated. The re reasons being almost the same as I discussed for convex lenses. You can easily understand that. You guys are smart. Yeah, so we can see here any ray of light, for example, incident parallel to the principal axis, the same ray which we took for convex lenses, but in this case, because of its uh, thicker edge and thinner middle part, you'll find that it seems to diverge from a virtual point on the principal axis. And that point is found by producing this refracted ray backwards and wherever it interacts, that is your principal focus F1. That is your principal ray number one, extremely valid for concave lenses. Now, so similarly, as you can see F1 here, there is another focus on the other side because it's again a double curvature lens. So we can have the center of curvature two, and this is also your center of curvature one, for these two curved surfaces of this lens. So now the second principal ray which is very much valid for the concave lenses, how it should be like, how it should be is, if a ray of light for example is incident something like this, a ray of light coming from a different direction but it is well directed towards the focus. If it is well directed towards the focus of the concave lens because it can't go really straight through. Please remember even though it's transparent the refractive indexes matter a lot so hence it refracts parallel to the principal axis. So if you can analyze it with a cool head these are exactly again the opposite directions in accordance with the principle of reversibility of light. All right and the third principle ray which is easily understood is a ray of light which happens to be incident on the optical center from any direction is assumed to be leaving undeviated. So these are the three principal rays valid for concave lenses. So again, to understand better why a concave lens behaves as a diverging lens, we can again see that 
A concave lens can be imagined to be like a combination of two prisms, which are like upside down. There we have this very narrow glass slab in the middle. And again, we have this lens, the prism, something like this. It's just like a very good imagination for the shape of a concave lens. And as we know, what does the prism do with respect to the incident rays of light? It always bends the light rays towards the broad base of it. So in this case also, you will find the same results coming out of the prism. So hence, it always looks like a diverging lens. Again, 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 let me tell you that for the lenses to behave like converging or diverging, the refractive index of the medium in which they are immersed is extremely important. I mean to say, this is air, N1, this is air again, N1, and this is N2, some kind of a optically denser medium than the air medium. Then only the shape will behave like a concave lens. Get it clear, all right? So at the same time, this is a very thin glass slab, so the amount of lateral displacement happening through is highly negligible. It almost seems like going undeviated. Hope I'm very clear with the principal rays of both convex and concave lenses. So I hope I'm very clear till here. All right. Is that clear? Principal rays of convex lenses and concave lenses. Now we'll talk about the ray diagrams. Okay. So uh, students tend to confuse at the earliest level. Then there is a good technique to understand how not to get confused up. All right. So let me show you how to always get it right. Let us start with convex lenses. The first uh, thing to remember in the heads is out of the three principal rays, which you sh definitely should know, out of those three, I can use any two. And since we have already discussed in our previous classes about the image formation by concave and convex mirrors, the properties of concave mirrors, my dear, concave mirrors, if you remember, this is your concave mirror, a converging mirror. It can form real as well as virtual images. The same properties of images are valid for convex lens. So the names are getting interchanged. First thing to get it into your heads very, very clearly. Concave mirror's image properties match up with convex lens image properties. Then the remaining two, you got it. The concave lens image properties will match up with convex mirror. As simple as that. This is converging mirror, converging lens. So I hope you got the technique clear. So let me first of all actually finish up uh, how to really to draw convex lens diagrams. So for concave mirrors, we have to study six positions. Those six positions are equally valid for convex lenses. So it means that a convex lens can form real images as well as virtual images. It can form real and same sized images, real and diminished images, real and magnified images. But when it comes to virtual images, it can only form virtual and magnified image. So let's get started. This is our principal axis, the optical center, the principal focus one, the principal focus, or we call it as the second focus to F1, or the center of curvature that is. This is your second focus, and this is the second center of curvature to F2. All right? So we will always start, the technique is always start right from the far away position. So this is my far away position, okay? This is called position number one. Object situated at infinity. When the object is situated at infinity, then you can imagine rays of light from infinity traveling parallelly to the principal axis. It will travel obliquely also, that's not a big issue, but it will travel from a very far away distance. And finally, the lens will make the light rays to converge at a point. And you'll find that the refracted beam of light happens to intersect by itself at one common point. That is called as the principal focus. 
So this distance from the optical center to this focus is what we call as focal length. So if the curvature of both the surfaces is exactly the same, then the focal length on the left and the right will be exactly equal. These are called thin spherical lenses. All right. So this is what we call as also in this case the image distance. So what is the position of the object? The position of the object for this particular case, I will say the object is this. The object is at infinity. All right. Then the second characteristic needed to, re, uh, to be written is the position of the image. Where is the image formed? The image is formed at the focus. Sorry, not 2F2. This is only F2. Here is the image formed. A very, very tiny point-sized image. Please see that. This is almost like the sun in the sky. And this is the tiny dot of the sun's image, extremely diminished. So the next characteristic to be written is size of the image. This is called highly diminished, or we can call it as point-sized image. Highly diminished. Or the last characteristic I want to know is what type of image is that? Nature of the image. The nature of the image can be easily seen from the diagram itself. The refracted rays intersect by themselves, meet at a point. Such kind of image formation always results in a real image. An image which can be easily obtained or casted on a screen, but this image may not be able to easily detect in this case, but these images are also inverted, that is upside down. Real, inverted and very, very diminished image is the characteristic for his first position of the object. I hope you're getting it right, right? Okay, good. The next position will be, now you can easily see that, I can leave it for you too. If I come really closer, something like I'm situated beyond 2F1, okay? Beyond 2F1, I'm coming closer now, very far away to the, towards the lens. As I shift towards the lens, as the object shifts towards the lens, the image will start moving away from the lens. The object distance goes on decreasing, the image distance will go on increasing. So if I'm here, the image probably may be here. That is inverted, real, but still diminished. Now this, uh, this is second, now coming to the third position, if you are here, suppose you are standing at 2F1, then there is the point, the image also shifts away and the image will be exactly forming at 2F2. This is real, inverted, same sized image, okay, that is the only position where you got a same sized real image. Now you are getting closer and closer, suppose you are now standing somewhere here. That is between 2F1 and F1. All right? There you find the image is shifting away and away. And now the image has gone magnified. For the first time, you get to see a real and magnified image for the special position. What if I stand at the focus itself? Means my object distance is almost equal to the focal length of the lens. Then you'll find, yes, any guesses? Yeah, I got it. The image goes to infinity. Very easy trick to easily understand and remember. When I was standing at infinity, the image was forming at the focus. When myself I'm standing at the focus, the image shifts to infinity. These are the first five positions of an object placed in front of a convex lens to give us real and varied sizes of images. But still, you can say I can still get closer. If I'm getting really close to this convex lens, as we did for concave mirrors, I'm standing between F1 and O. There you will find the image. The image now cannot form at infinity. The image comes on the, onto the same side as the object is, and it forms, very interestingly, above the principal axis just like the object means i mean to say it's erect now 
but this image is virtual, cannot be easily obtained on a screen. So this is your virtual, erect and magnified image. This is the special property of a convex lens for which it is very famously known as, as a simple microscope or can be also called as a magnifying glass. Okay, this is the same piece of glass which we use to burn the dry leaves or burn a black paper easily. Okay, be careful while handling with uh, convex lenses. They can really sharply focus the light rays onto a point. All right, so this is the trick, my dear, to easily remember in your head. Okay, so let's see the remaining formation of the images. A position of object beyond 2F1. Draw the convex lens as usual, the principal axis, the focus on both the sides at equidistant from each other. Then place the object as given beyond 2F1. Draw the principal ray parallel to the principal axis, passes through the focus F2. And then the second principal ray passing through optical center. My dear students, you should know that it will be definitely intersecting between F2 and 2F2. So you can kindly adjust your diagram in case you need it as I showed you. And hence write the characteristics of the image formed. This image is also diminished but real in nature and inverted image. Now, for object placed at 2F1, for a convex lens, draw the convex lens as shown. Draw your principal axis passing through the mid half of the lens. Mark your points optical center, F1, F2, 2F1, 2F2, all equidistant from each other. Now place the object, the third position, at 2F1. Then choose your principal rays wisely. We have only three principal rays to choose from. So here is the principal ray parallel to the principal axis passing through the focus F2 on the other side. Then the next principal ray chosen in the diagram is passing through F1 which will refract parallel to the principal axis. Hence the intersection should happen at 2F2. This is a unique position for convex lens as it forms a real and inverted but same sized image. For this, the magnification will be equal to minus 1. You may even choose a principal ray passing through optical center to construct the image. So it's a real and inverted and same sized image. Now we'll draw a ray diagram for the position of object between 2F1 and F1 of a convex lens. So this is the initial position of the diagram. Now place the object as asked, choose your principal ray parallel to the principal axis passing through F2 on the other side, the other principal ray passing through the optical center undeviated. The image here forms beyond 2F2. It's a real and inverted image but it is also a magnified image. So in such a case, the magnification is always greater than 1. Now, for the position of object at the focus of the lens itself, that is at F1. So the object has come really close and this is also the position number 5. 
Now, drawing the principal ray parallel to the principal axis, the ray refracts through focus F2. The other ray passing through optical center goes undeviated. So it is assumed that in reality, the rays after refraction meet at a point at extremely large distance, which is at infinity. So the image is highly magnified, but real as well as inverted. Now, let me show you the last possible position of an object placed in front of a convex lens. So as usual, as you have seen so far, get your convex lens, the shape correctly. Then draw your principal axis. Mark your points, optical center, the focus F1, 2F1, the F2, and 2F2. By this time, every student should be very, very familiar and filling it really easy. All right? So the question says, I should be placing it between F1 and O. So here is the object. Here is the object placed in front of the lens pretty close. So using the principal rays, what we have used so far, I draw the first principal ray, passing through the focus on the other side. The other one, we can see that it passes. It looks very similar. Most of the students confuse up between the position number five and the position number six. So my dear students, position number five, you're standing at the focus. And the light ray seems to dive or converge at some point, which is uh, very, very far. That's why we call it at infinity but here you should be very careful while drawing also the rays of light after refraction seems to be diverging away but the image is seen so where is the image actually formed if i produce this refracted rays backwards straight then i find that there is a point where this light rays actually happen to meet so in this case that is the meeting point they have just zoomed into the lattice you can see that so here is the head of the object and it, that meeting point happens to be above the principal axis for the first time for as we've seen for a concave mirror also, right? So if this is your X, this is the image of it, X dash. If this is Y, this is the image of it, Y dash. So this is what we call as the magnifying action of a convex lens. Hence it is called a magnifying glass. So the position of the image in this case, you'll say on the same side as the object is. Same side as the object is. The size of the image, yes, definitely. It is magnified, enlarged, larger than the size of the object. There are many ways to express your opinion. And the nature of the image, my dear, be extremely careful for the first time in this ray diagrams, you're seeing that the refracted rays do not happen to intersect anywhere in the near future. They seem to be meeting completely virtually. These images cannot be obtained on a screen, hence called virtual, but they are upright images. So it's a virtual and erect image formed by convex lens. Here we wrap up the ray diagrams for convex lens. Here immediately after I will show you the two possible positions of the object for a concave lens, also known as diverging lens. So here we go. Now let me discuss about the image formation by concave lenses. Okay. So the first position, here we go for a change. This is concave lens, which is thinner in the middle but thicker at the edges. This is the way to draw the diagram. Okay. Then you get your principal axis right through it. This is your optical center. The focus F1, this is your 2F1. This is your F2, this is your 2F2. So just like for a convex lens, what if the object is placed at infinity in case of a concave lens. So this is your object. So the concave lens uh, peculiarity is that it always forms same type of images. Remember what convex mirrors did? Yes. 
If you haven't watched about those previous videos on concave and convex mirrors, do watch them and get yourselves perfect. So here also the same thing is about to happen, but the only difference is the ray of light incident parallel to the principal axis doesn't really get reflected off, rather it refracts and diverges away from a virtual point on the principal axis, which we call as the virtual focus of a concave lens. Similarly, you can use one more ray of light below the principal axis, parallel to it, and you find that the ray of light diverges away. So hence, this is the formation of the image for this object at infinity. Extremely pinpointed size image is formed. So we can write the position of the image formed will be what? So definitely it is formed at the focus F1. What about the size of the image? So definitely you will see that it is uh, highly diminished, which is very, very similar for the first case of convex lenses also. And nature of the image, yes, you can easily see it from the diagram. I'm very sure if you're following my class carefully, very easy to identify. The refracted rays never ever meet in real. So this is the formation of a virtual image. Virtual images, my dear, are always upright images. That is, they are always erect images. Did you get me right? Come on. We will see the image formation by concave lens. <clears throat> when the object is between infinity and the optical center. Okay, let's uh, get it right. This is the last position possible for a concave lens because as I told you, a concave lens always forms similar kind of images irrespective of the position of the object. So we have just seen it for object at infinity and practically it is found that wherever you place a concave, uh, wherever you place an object in front of a concave lens, there is no particular positioning. Like we say, between the extreme far infinity and the optical center, wherever you place it. If you place the object suppose here, that's it. <clears throat> it doesn't change much whether you place it here, here or there. The image is going to always form between the optical center and the focus. I mean to say the image distance for this position, for this second position, of a conve concave lens, sorry, will be always less than the focal length of a concave lens. So here we go, the first principal ray seems to diverge away from the focus, doesn't intersect anywhere, and if you choose this principal ray number two passing right through the optical center undeviated, we find that there is a virtual intersection of the rays of light. So this is, my dear, the image of this object. So this is the head x dash, this is the foot y dash. So as I said, the image distance, this v, is definitely lesser than the focal length of the concave lens. So what is the position of the image in this case? What you would like to write? It is always between optical center and the focus f1 okay now size size of the image definitely doesn't change much still it is diminished and never will grow to the size of the object and uh, what is the nature of the image my dear come on come on the nature of the image by looking at the diagram you should be able to say this is the last diagram in our today's class this is a virtual but erect image. So here we end up today's discussion on the ray diagrams of the principal rays of convex and concave lenses. Hope you enjoyed learning from me. If you do it, please like, share my video, share my channel with your friends so that it helps everyone. And do subscribe if you are new to this channel. This is SMR Online Physics, always for you. So see you again in my next class. Bye-bye.